one man slave and of course November 30th 2012 um, and I gotta get ready for work very soon I just wanna make this video because uh, Femetheist is back in contact with me and she's being really nice at least I interpret it as being nice and that's welcome it's all fine actually she's a little bit too nice she's nicer than I expected for <laughs> somebody who is probably my direct rival or um, most significant rival um, and so I'm just writing her message uh, uh, writing um, her um, oh crap I lost what I was saying okay here's what she says to me she says I'll try to get around to watching all of your Im immensely long videos very soon uh, I appreciate the effort you've put into responding. Feel free to set them as responses to my newest videos since it's on the same topic. Okay, yeah, she says, let's continue the fight to end uh, violence. So I'm going to respond. Um, yes, indeed. We all need to work. Stop scratching. Stop. Stop scratching. Stand or double standard uh, of treat. Um... <laughs> <laughs>
here. I don't advocate violence upon women or right now. I'll write her a quick message since she took the time. Um, I'm just going to read this real quick uh, for the audio. <coughs> just got to check it make sure it's all good. I'm always particular about that because I don't want clipping or distortion or whatever. But then again, I, I want it to be uh, oh, okay. I, I want it to be loud enough to um, I, I I just woke up a little while ago, so like you know I um don't feel like talking very loud. All right, okay. Um. All right. Uh, the Femetheist, She said to me, uh, "I'll try to get around to watching all your immensely long videos very soon. I appreciate the effort you've put into responding." Feel free to set them as responses to my newest videos since it's on the same topic. And just, you know, uh, I think that's cool. You know, I'm glad she wrote me the message. And honestly, I think she's being a little bit too nice. I mean, I don't really, I don't really expect this kind of treatment from, uh, you know, somebody who's, you know, I perceive to be an opponent or whatever. So I'll say, yes indeed, we all need to work toward ending violence. No more double standard of treatment between the genders. Perhaps equality of treatment between the genders will happen eventually. On another topic, uh, your, oh, I misspelled that, oh, your arm. Your interactions are being interpreted as, uh, as, uh, light. Uh, even when I wouldn't expect such positive treatment from someone who is an opponent and especially such 
of a, of such a significantly different ideology. In my latest videos, I have some serious issues that are very important to men and and is the reasons why people such as myself have become men going their own way. <clears throat> I don't advocate violence upon women or anyone else as a response because of what topics I cover in the five hour video that got split into five segments. But it is a strong motivation to just avoid interactions of particularly of, of to to you know just avoid interactions of practically all types of women and for men to live alone and especially not to date, have relations and especially not to get married. You can continue being polite if you feel that is necessary, but it's not expected. Thanks for keeping in contact. I don't hate you. Violence isn't the answer. And enjoy the videos. Thanks, Manslave. Alright, and I'm going to send this to a Fometheist, of whom me and the disposable human doing refer to as Dr. Claw. And now I'm sending that. And, uh, she's got her new video. We'll see what it's like. And, uh, hopefully my, my audio levels are still good. Good meeting, JJ. Thanks for coming in from New York, New York. Sure, sure. Jill, can you summarize the recap? Just the recap. Yeah, uh -huh. we started, but... I think this will be her sixth video, because at first she only had two. Then she put up a, thir a third, like a month later or whatever. And then a fourth, and then like a month later she put up a fifth. So, yeah, this I think is her, s her sixth video. Beginning at 9 a.m. in the morning. Hey, you guys here? Fifth Third Bank has a card that combines credit and debit. What? Okay, we don't need to see his what? advertisement. No, we're done to see it all once we're... which is basically just a virtually all-inclusive compilation of the current ideologies and ideas of the Femitheist movement. The link to view or download it will be in the description of this video. It covers devices, concepts, briefly talks about solutions such as how International Castration Day is a secondary solution and so forth. It'll answer a lot of the questions. International Castration Day should never be a solution. This is where I disagree with you, Dr. Claw, and this is the kind of stuff that pisses me off. I mean, if you're all for, like, equality and, and just, like, human rights and just treating people properly and with respect and, and if you're about, like, no violent treatment of people and just whatever, you know, and just if you're about pacification then th that'd be great and I'd be on board and and be supportive of the cause but when you talk about castrating men you know as as a solution to whatever problem um, and this is compulsory castration you know not voluntary just like you know rape is a form of compulsory sex you know without the the consent of the person who is had being, you know, in the act of sex, you know, which that would be rape if it was compulsory sex against somebody's will, <clears throat> and we all recognize it's wrong and all that, but like, no, I mean, I'm not in favor of, of forced sterilization of women either, you know, like especially on a large scale and and having a big holiday for it or whatever no I mean this is where I, I have to just go off on you okay I mean like when you contact me in the messages Dr. Claw you're all nice and it's all cool and stuff like that and it's like you know when you have a conversation like you know as people and it's all fine but when, when you start out with this castration day 
and and blame man for all these problems and take these freaking like oh my gosh most radical views and and then when I actually do these things that harm people that that's that's why I have to fight you that's why I have to fight against your ideology and your 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 goals and your movement and all this other kind of stuff mm. and then it's just unacceptable and it's unacceptable because it's unacceptable because it's unacceptable because it's unacceptable you know like if you're if if, if a guy thought this stuff up um wanting to do these kinds of things to women everybody would recognize it as wrong um you know if a person wanted to do it to blacks or hispanics or jews or or asians or any other group it would be recognized as a hate crime which it is you know what i'm saying International Castration Day, the concept of it is a hate crime. It is a hate crime. You know what I'm saying? And, like, you, you need to understand. Well, I need to fix my audio again. Um, it is a hate crime, and it shouldn't be happening. Um, no, like, just... That's not the way to achieve peace, okay? And then my big solution, I mean, it's a big part of it, is just, you know, for men to avoid women. And hit the reset button, you know? When women then decide that, you know, they have to learn that if they want to interact with a man, they're going to have to behave to some kind of acceptable standard. And, like not be bitches you know if they want to snag a guy or even have a conversation with a guy they're gonna to have to work for it like men are expected to do right now and that's my solution and then when both genders put equal effort into getting along then like maybe we can have some kind of peace you know and, and both genders will have well they'll have more in common when both of them have to put effort into maintaining something they can relate to each other, they'll get along better and all that, they'll feel like comrades instead of enemies. I've been receiving every day in my inbox, so I'd like you all to take a look at it. It's a little bit long and will likely be revised and I'll get on to in the future, but I just wanted to cover everything that I thought was important right now. Also, for those who have been asking, I haven't made a new video in a couple of weeks because I haven't had a proper camera to use, which is also the reason I'm only doing an audio update right now. Once I well, what you can do is you can do with what I do, and just use a screen capture program, so that way you're free to just browse web pages and you know on topics, and then you know, I mean, it's pretty easy, and then of course records audio also, or. I mean, there's stuff you can do. I mean, I I'm comfortable with that method. And the name of the program is called Kazam. Uh, I'm just going to show it to you real quick. icon for it so you know what it looks like uh, it might be just for Linux but um I use Linux I'm not using Windows but um you know that's just not it <clears throat> screen capture Screencast, that's what it is. Yeah, um, yeah, I think it just takes video frame buffer data from the graphics processor and just assembles it together in a video format. Um, 
screencasting software. Um, VLC has screen casting. Oh, didn't know that. Um, Oh, free seer, that'd probably be worth it. The reason why is because GPL, you know, the licensing, which is very good. It's open source, you can get it for Windows, Mac, and Linux. What I use is Kazam, and it's only for Windows. I mean, for it's only for Linux. It better not be only for Windows. Um, and, uh,. So anybody watching here, you might want to get Free Seer. I right, give it a try. Looks like it's interesting. And um, yep, you can download the installer and all that. I might give it a try myself. Um, matter of fact, I'll just demonstrate how to get software. How to get software in Linux. It's really easy. Heavy internet connection. Is it not? It's not in the repository. It's. Anyway, you just type in the uh, name or the description of the program you're looking for. You click checkbox, uh, then you click apply. It'll tell you what all it needs, and you know, and then you just OK it, you know, and then um, it'll download and install it. Then it'll be ready for you. Alright, but give it a try. Maybe that'll be a little more uh, useful. With a camera, I'll be able to make a lot more videos a lot more frequently. And finally... Well, Dr. Claw, you can actually <laughs> just get some money from, uh, from Anita Sarkeesian. I mean, she ran off with $160,000 and didn't give anybody... Um, the video project that she asked for all those donations for, asked for all the money to, to financially make possible. No, uh, she's actually got some nice equipment and all that. I mean, you know, she's got money for all those sixth generation, or no, not six, but seventh generation game consoles and all this other stuff. Mm. Just eat my breakfast. Um, if Anita Sarkeesian has got um, you know, nice video camera and nice equipment and and um, kind of some professional types of um piece of equipment for production, you know, if she's got enough money to have all those some generation game consoles, you know, all this other stuff, and plus on top of that. She then got one hundred and sixty thousand dollars from her fundraiser, um, and hasn't produced any products with it yet. Um, and products, I mean videos and the Kickstarter's, you know, series of um, you know, tropes versus women, like she had um, said she was going to deliver. Well, she took the money, and didn't deliver anything for it. But I'm sure all you, you know, Prometheus, all you got to do is tell her that um. You know, you want to make videos that hate men and, and um, further the gynocentric uh, agenda and all that. I'm sure, you know, she can give you at least $4,000 and gosh, like, 
even nowadays, even two hundred dollars will get you a really nice video camera. I was up at Best Buy, like earlier this week, and you'd be surprised how nice of a video camera you can get for just two hundred dollars. Well, slightly less than two hundred dollars, but two hundred dollars will cover it. You know, records to SD cards. You know, you'll handle secure digital. It's a typical type. Uh, secure digital high capacity. You know. SDHC. Then he'll handle the Secure Digital Extended Capacity, which is SDXC. And, you know, those uh, SD cards that are above 64 gig in capacity, you know, they go up to 2 terabyte, but you don't see 2 terabyte SD cards on the market yet. Um, and, um, you know, super low lux, so they'll handle low light. Uh, environments such as indoors they got image stabilizer the, you know they record in Dolby Digital which I'm assuming it's AC3 um, like the audio format that's used on DVDs um, it records uh, advanced video codec high definition it's full 1080p uh, uh, progressive um, resolution all this other good stuff um, and uh, yeah, I mean, you can snag one of them for anywhere from 190 to maybe 200 dollars, depending on you know how nice the features you want it. And um, but anyway, yeah, I mean, so if you got even just even a thousand dollars from uh, from uh, Anita Sarkeesian, you can get you a really. You wouldn't even need a thousand, man. If you can just get like three hundred dollars from her, you can get you a really nice camera. But you know, if you were to get a thousand dollars from her, you know, you could get you something that's even better and get you a tripod and one of them umbrella things that you shine light into so it diffuses the light so that it makes everything look proper. Because you pretty much got to have one of those, or else the lighting situation apparently just doesn't look very good. That's why photographers and all the music based on blog requests and votes my next videos will be about feminist frequency and mainstream feminism international castration day and i'll be doing a question and answer video answering some of the user submitted questions i've already got around 100 questions but i'm only going to answer 10 of them feel free to keep submitting the questions though I'll put the email for that in the description as well. That's it for now. The video about feminist frequency and mainstream feminism will be done as soon as possible. Thank you all once again for watching. Remember, stay tuned and be aware. Oh, and have a wonderful day. <clears throat> okay. Well, if somebody sent me a hundred questions and if I decide to answer them all, it'd probably take forever with the amount of explanation that me and the disposable human doing that we do um, I mean just keep elaborating on topics to explain stuff and um because we actually think a whole lot about stuff and even when he's sitting there uh, you know playing Minecraft or whatever he's thinking of a bunch of stuff and whenever I'm you know doing you know anything like I just constantly think about and analyze stuff. Um, so yeah, uh, Dr. Claude, I can understand why you would cut down 100 questions down to 10. I mean, you know, most people would. It's just save time and all that. And anyway, but um, I'm interested to see uh, how you handle Anita Sarkeesian, the person that does Feminist Frequency because she really gets on my nerves because she's like she's basically like this conspiracy theorist but she you know she's a typical feminist and um and you know like and she's kind of a coward because she'll open up the the ability to comment on her stuff and then and then <clears throat> basically you know open the floodgates and a bunch of comments come in and she closes it real quick and then pouts and all this kind of stuff when she gets a bunch of negative criticism and 
all that kind of stuff um or just whatever happens and the funny thing is she gets criticism from feminists also which is I mean not all of her criticism is from feminists but you know some of it is and um anyway um yeah and she just I mean she's the type of person that'll ban you not you specifically but ban you know you hypothetically ban a person and all that she doesn't got like the courage that you have or that I have in allowing negative comments and it's sad that um mm, it's really sad that people <clears throat> have decided to make that video game or whatever using flash scripting um, you know, to to punch Anita Sarkeesian in the face, you know, basically a picture of her. I mean, I, I support people's right to do that because, you know, it's just, I, I just think it's in bad taste that people choose violence as a means of expression. And I'll just go ahead and tell you, Anita Sarkeesian pisses me off sometimes, and sometimes she amuses me with her ridiculousness. But, you know, punching her in the face or whatever is just not something of interest. I mean, it doesn't even have any appeal. You know, it's like, why even think of something like that? If anything, you know, <laughs> I actually find interest in mocking her. Or anybody else. I mean, we've done that kind of... See, see, <clears throat> see, Thometheus, like, the way me and the Disposable Doing handled you in some of our videos, you know, where we're, like, making funny and stuff, that, that's just how we do stuff, you know, and we, it's not just you that we do that to, it's our bosses at our jobs, it's, you know, like, anybody that gets on our nerves. Hmm. We mock customers like that, um, not to their faces, because <laughs> we're not that brave. <laughs> but we use it to express situations and all that, and that's how we deal with things. And we think it's amusing. <clears throat> um. Anyway. But Anita Sarkeesian is just pathetic. I mean, she's just so full of hate. And me and the disposable doing, or the disposable human doing, we talked about um doing a ver video series of analysis uh, to analyze female behavior and the psychological motivations that are responsible for human behavior not just female behavior but male behavior uh you know like cause and effect um and what causes people to act the way they do but we would specifically focus on feminism and why regardless how regardless of how small the amount of the male population is that commits rape you know, regardless of how few men out of everybody in the male gender, you know, it actually does rape. No matter how rare rape is for men to commit, regardless, you know, or, or when compared to the whole percentage of men in existence, the point is that it, it's just it's just hyped up. Is it? Well, it's just like the war on terror ten years ago, like back in two thousand one, two thousand two. You know. The government spreads all this, you know, not just the American government, but other governments spread all this. This they they have this environment of panic and fear, and you know, saying that Osama's out there, we gotta stop him. And then it's it's like such a cover, and, and it, it it provides like an environment in which then the government can 
start up a skirmish or a war or a conflict in whatever region of the world they want because they can say that Al Qaeda is there. That's kind of how a bunch of rape culture stuff works. And we're not going to dispute that rape really does happen. And there are men who rape women, but also there are women who rape men. Uh, so it goes both directions. The point is there's people who rape people. Okay, but it's usually regard it's treated in, in society as, as, you know, all this panic and fear is spread. You know, portraying it as just, you know, that rape is pretty much only committed by men because that's the only thing it's focused on. And me and the disposable human doing we're talking about why a rape allegation has so much of a psychologically devastating effect on men because it's like it's almost like the ultimate the ultimate contradiction of what he is. I mean, it totally it it, it, it totally goes against and conflicts with his own, um, you know, um, instincts of being the protector provider that he's had for thousands of years, you know, um, and it's just like so devastating like that and um, so anyway uh, I mean like like we talked about like few things could really hurt somebody to the very core like that and see that's why you know women especially fem feminized women those who you know of whose Pandora box has been opened up um you know, the amount of hatred in their mind that, that would have to be going on toward men in order to make a false rape allegation. And yes, there are false rape allegations that do happen. I did more than one analysis on the Kathy Tertola rape allegation, and, you know, I'm going to submit that to you. It's in that, um, you know, uh, questions for the Prometheus. It's actually in video number five. Uh, which is the last, um, you know, segment, and uh, where it's just, you know, a clear-cut example of a rape allegation, because this one got caught on camera, and uh, so anyway, <clears throat> um, so anyway, it does happen, and society's going to have to reevaluate how rape cases are are done because of this video coming forth and, and then other confessions uh, and re and story recantations and all that I mean like uh, this is in this video uh, where Kathy Tertola got caught on camera I mean here it is you can obviously see rape is not occurring because it's all caught on camera matter of fact the the guy the alleged rapist is actually telling her to get away from him and get out of his room and leave him alone and she thinks that his recording device only does audio so she tries to frame him as being a rapist whereas at the beginning of the um of the recording she's actually punching the shit out of him and there's two other guys with her right there they're her friends and then they try to pull her away from the guy who's just basically standing on his on his bed barefoot with a camera because you can see his feet later and all that and they intimidate him and all that and then they they, they just want to leave you can tell the look on their face and they're, they're walking out and all that but then this woman Kathy Tertola just won't let it be she keeps just pouring on the emotion so much and controlling these men and trying to use them as agents of, uh, of violence by proxy um and I mean, in one instance, she says, "You won't let me leave." You know, uh, you're trying to rape me. While she's sitting on, she decides to sit on his bed while he's telling her to leave. And she says that he won't let her leave, and that uh, and that he's trying to rape her and all that. Meanwhile, she's so close to the door 
she can just extend her arm and touch the doorknob and the door is wide open anyway because the you can see light coming through the doorway and it's shining on her body and then in one instant another instance she's banging on the door with her hand the open door with her hand saying you won't let me leave and um and then a few seconds after this woman's boyfriend is checking the time on his phone you know the 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 accused rapist is uh telling her to call the police and get out and then she Kathy Tertola says that she doesn't have a phone and uh and the guy says you know the alleged rapist says you you have a phone in your hand your boyfriend has a phone and all that. it's so the, the whole rape allegation fiasco is so absurd and it shows exactly what a woman will do to try to get her way, and she will use a rape allegation. Mm. And then another thing is these guys, they know the rape allegation is bullshit because they were in the room the whole time. They know that <clears throat> they know that nobody got raped. There was no sexual advances made toward anybody, and yet because Kathy Tortola won't shut up with her fake tears. Um, these guys get, you know, really pissed off, and they decide to go up there, you know, to go back into the room and and intimidate the the alleged rapist and intimidate him again and again and again, just to appease Kathy Tortola and to get her to shut up. I mean, it just shows the inherent female... I mean, it just shows the inherently selfish female nature. And this woman's a business owner. And it's just... It's pathetic. Mm. Um, a person might ask, well, what did he do to provoke that situation? Exactly. What could have been done to provoke that situation? I mean, what if he didn't pay his bill? What if he stole a napkin? What would prompt her to act that way? I mean, like, you, you gotta understand this. I mean, regardless of what he did in that bed and breakfast place or whatever, it does not warrant or justify a false rape allegation. Especially when nobody when nobody was raped or no sexual interactions was being done between anybody in this situation. But these are the things that your female gender will do. I say female gender because, I mean, what guy goes around making rape allegations? You know what I'm saying? I mean, because according to a lot of feminists, you know, men can't be raped. You know, because men want sex all the time. They just think with their penises. Well, I actually have noticed that a lot of women think with their vaginas and see the world through their vagina. They portray themselves as, you know, as the fragile cradle of life that must be protected at all time like there's some kind of holy grail or something. And then... Um, and then you see all these teenage moms like Amber Portwood and then my former girlfriend and then all kind of others that are around, that are around. and they, they want to be validated through being a mother because that's the most significant way that a woman can be validated just in terms of biology and psychology and just you know the whole human family kind of thing just like men you know protect the nest and all that um, and, um, you know, that's how they get validated through their protector provider role. Uh, anyway, um, yeah, and, um, so, uh, yeah, women want to be violated, so that, or, I mean, they don't want, no, they, no, that's not what I meant. They want to be validated. So what they do is they they have some guy knock them up, and then a lot of these women, you know, they, you know, they they want to get pregnant no matter what, and 
and the guy might not want to be a father, and that's how it was in my case and a few other people's cases, and the woman still wants to be pregnant anyway, so she'll tell the guy that she's on the pill or, or whatever else, and then and he's naive enough to and the guy is naive enough to believe it because he was trained from childhood I don't know this is in my case and the disposable human doing his case we you know where we were trained we as males were trained to trust women um, and uh, we, we were trained to trust women and to obey them and it set us up for failure um, you know, sugar and spice and everything nice. Oh, all right. Um, I, I really got to end this video because I got to start getting ready for work and work a job, get some of my nerves and all that. All right. So, um, you know, from Atheist, you know, you can watch this video and answer stuff or comment or whatever and it'd be great and I mean anybody anybody else can watch it too so um just want to make this video real quick to um did I get oh, did I... Oh, okay well <laughs> you don't have any reason to be impolite <laughs> you kind of do actually I mean like look at the way I like behave toward you sometimes because your ideologies aggravate me. I mean, I'm just saying, like, if if you wanted to, you know, get all frustrated, you know, you're, like, that that would be understandable. Um, yeah, well, yeah, there's no reason to be physically hostile toward anybody. Uh, I'm just reading her stuff, you know, where she says she doesn't see any reason to be hostile toward anybody. Well, I agree, because, you know, I, I actually like being nice to people, but, like, you know, when it comes to all this, just like, all this hostile stuff that, that a lot of women will do to men, and it's all done in, in the name of, you know, at, at getting justice or whatever. You know, like Linda McCoofy from that um, video where, um, you know, this experiment that ABC News did, this report where... Um, you know, a woman would hit a man and abuse him in public, and then 163 people walked by without doing anything. Over the span of several hours, there were 163 people walking by this guy in the park and, and didn't do anything about it when the man was getting beat up. And uh, it didn't take very long for, um, for uh, people to come to the aid and rescue of the woman who was, you know, getting abused and all that. Um... But anyway, I, I don't got time to read all of your message. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> Dr. Claw. Oh my gosh, she 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 signed off as Dr. Claw. Oh my gosh, this is so good. See, and and Dr. Claw, I don't hate you or anything like that, and I don't wish harm on you, but like I will oppose you and all that. Like I mean, I will call you names and, you know, like Dr. Claw, because you're like the, <laughs> you just, you remind us of the cartoon character, I'm, you know, I'm like, and you don't look like Dr. Claw, and you don't sound like him, it's just you act like him with your grand schemes of how to deal with stuff, and all that, and I haven't read all your message now, um, but, um, But anyway, um, it is now see this here actually kind of makes me respect you right here where you say where you sign off as Dr. Claw and it's just it, it means that you're playing the game, you know, with me and all that. And um, me and the disposable human doing, we, we call each other stuff all the time and tease each other and like, it's just creative competition for us, you know what I'm saying? And we're trying to provoke the, you know, equal but opposite response from each other and just keep it going because it's amusing, you know? It's like, and, and the reason why we come up with these names for people is based on, based on attributes or characteristics of how they behave or how they look or whatever. 
and um, and uh, so anyway, um, it just so anyway, uh, yeah, I, I really got to end this video because I got I gotta get to work and all that. Uh, yeah, jokes aside, yeah, and all that. So enjoy watching. Oh, and until next time, I am Manslave, and this is for the Validation Warfare YouTube channel.